Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm your medical doctor and confidant, Dr. Cody Rall. In this video, we're going to take a look at the muse and the neorhythm. A lot of you have been asking me on YouTube comments and emails and in social media, which one you should purchase first. Some people have the muse already, some people have the neorhythm already, and I'm not under any delusions that everybody is going to purchase both of these. They each cost about $350 each, although there are some holiday specials going on right now for both of them but I don't expect people to buy both of them right out of the gate. I want to help you try to decide which one might be best for you to purchase first and then if later on you decide maybe the next year to invest in a piece of neurotechnology, get the other one. But the question is which one should you get for yourself? So each of these have some similarities in that they do influence your brain rhythms. Uh, we take a look at that through EEG patterns and uh, both have been shown to alter your EEG patterns through scientific studies studies on uh, both companies that are uh, conducting the research. The question is, what are you trying to alter your brain waves for? Are you trying to improve your concentration, your memory, reduce anxiety, or is it for spiritual advancement reasons? Each of these have their strengths, and we'll talk about that today. One of the things that I like to talk about is internal versus external control. Are you looking to harness your brain waves from an internal perspective, or are you looking to influence them externally? And obviously, the neorhythm would be an external control device, whereas the muse would be more of an internal control device. But hold on one second, it's not quite that simple. Sometimes the lines are blurred, and again, it depends on what perspective you're coming from. Generally, I would recommend the average user to get a muse headband first and I'll tell you why. Um, the average user I see as on a bell curve of their needs and they don't have anxiety levels that are causing them to have daily panic attacks or anything like that and they're generally able to sit still and concentrate on the breath to do a meditative exercise for 10 to 20 minutes a day. Now if you find yourself outside of that bell curve, that's where I would recommend getting a neorhythm first. If you have constant panic attacks, for example, or just generally high anxiety that do not allow you to sit still for 10 to 20 minutes without feeling extremely uncomfortable, you know, I would recommend trying some meditative uh, exercises and apps first. Uh, Headspace is a really good resource. But you know, again, if you're having clinical levels of anxiety, Go see a mental health provider that might help you get to a level where you can actually engage in these neurotechnologies a little bit better. But just because you're seeing a professional doesn't mean that uh, you can't use one of these devices on the side of lifestyle and wellness to help augment the treatment that you might be getting. Hopefully you're not to that level, but even if you are experiencing a lot of anxiety and have tried meditation before and cannot seem to calm down in order to concentrate on the breath, the neorhythm uh, alpha synchronization settings might be great for you because I find that when I use the neorhythm in those settings, it actually stabilizes the mind. So you can actually concentrate on the breath better during a meditative exercise and not get so distracted all the time. It might actually be good for people that have significant concentration issues as well if you have ADHD type symptoms, but you don't want to use pharmaceuticals to stabilize your mind, your attention on the breath. The other thing that I would recommend it being used for is if you you are a very drowsy person, maybe you have uh, narcolepsy or maybe you've had a traumatic brain injury, unfortunately, in the past, and you need something to keep you up within the beta range of the, of the brain waves instead of slipping down into delta and theta. And delta and theta are, more, are drowsiness. So if you've tried meditating before and you get drowsy and fall asleep all the time trying to concentrate on the breath, the near rhythm again might be a device for you in order to keep you from slipping down in the delta and theta Theta, and there are beta and gamma settings on the neorhythm that can help you maintain wakefulness so that you can concentrate on the breath for longer periods of time, getting a better meditative experience. Again, if you're having clinical symptoms, go to a mental health professional. Neither of these devices are FDA approved for uh, referable conditions, meaning that um, a diagnosable con condition in DSM-5, but uh, that doesn't mean that they can't be used alongside professional treatment or treat more mild symptoms. So the neorhythm, as I said, I think can be very useful for people that are either having large amounts of anxiety when they try to sit down and meditate, or they are simply falling asleep during the sessions because there's multiple settings here on the neorhythm that will help you at least sit down and 
concentrate on the breath or a meditative object for 10 to 20 minutes, which is the most important part. If you can't do that with the Muse headband, then I would recommend doing that with the Neo Rhythm. For most people, if you don't have clinical levels of anxiety and you can stay awake during a meditative exercise, I would recommend using the Muse headband. The meditative exercises might seem boring at first, but with time, they will become more and more absorbing into the meditative object, which will be more and more fun, and you can really get into that with the Muse headband. Again, if you're on the regular bell curve in terms of uh, symptoms of central nervous system activation or deactivation, I would recommend the Muse headband. As far as sleep goes, if you're having chronic problems with insomnia, I will say that the Neo Rhythm improved sleep function that enhances theta and delta brain waves will have more of an immediate effect over your ability to fall asleep. If you're having more mild sleep problems and are interested in learning meditative techniques to improve your sleep over a longer period of time with a lot of practice, I would recommend using the Muse S for that. One thing to keep in mind is that any techniques that you can learn by using the Muse headband, you can employ at any time through that internal control skill set, whereas the experiences related to the Neo Rhythm will be for the most part limited to when you are actually wearing the device through external control. So that could be important for skills that you learn to get to sleep, for anxiety control, and other measures when you're thinking about internal and external control. The external control may provide more immediate relief of symptoms, but that internal control builds a skill set that will be with you for a lifetime. Now you can use both at the same time. The Neo Rhythm will not directly affect the signal of the Muse headband. And we saw that in Igor Jurgensen's uh, work in which he did randomized control trials with the Neo Rhythm using EEG and tracking the brain waves of the subjects in order to validate its effects. So I've tested it. It actually does work simultaneously with the Muse headband. And if you get one before the other, but then you decide that you want to do some type of uh, combination exercises, it can be really fun. It can be really fun to take a look at how your brain responds to the Neo Rhythm on the different settings for meditative exercises and track that with EEG. And it can also be fun to use the Neo Rhythm to try to influence the exercises that you do with the Muse headband. You can try different stimulation settings. You can try stimulating before, during, or after calibration for the Muse headband. You can try stimulating uh, during the meditative exercise. You can try stimulating before you do the exercise and then having it off while you do the exercise. There's so many different types of combinations of meditative practices that you could do by using both the Neo Rhythm and the Muse. I've tried a number of these different combinations of use, but I haven't even fully cracked into the depth of what's possible in combining these two devices. Generally, I would just recommend calibrating like normal with the Muse headband and then putting on the Neo Rhythm during the meditative exercise, say in the Alpha Rhythm, and seeing how that affects your meditative experience and the scores you get on the Muse headband. But again, all those other combinations are possible possible and worth exploring if you do decide to get both of these over the course of a couple of years. One of the things that I worked on with clients in the Brain Circuit Training Program using the Muse headband with MindLift is that I found that people did fall into those categories of either having extremely high beta due to anxiety or a lot of theta and delta due to uh, being sleepy. And we would work in neurofeedback training to uh, stabilize those brainwave patterns in order to get them in the sweet spot so that they could have the best meditative experiences. Now you might not have mind lift at home, but you might notice that during meditative exercises you are either very, very distracted or anxious or falling asleep during the meditative exercise. And you can uh, try to use the Neo Rhythm to stabilize your brain into the sweet spot so that you can have better meditative exercises. If you had a lot of anxiety and beta, uh, the alpha setting on this would work very well. And if you had a lot of sleepiness, meaning that you have a lot of delta and theta in your uh, brain waves, the vigilance and gamma settings on this would work well for that if you're falling asleep. Now on both of these, I've said before, if you use the alpha setting on the Neo Rhythm or you use the meditative exercises on the Muse, which will put you in alpha, do the meditative experience for about 20 minutes and then take the devices off and try to uh, engage higher energy level centers. And what you will notice is you actually get a surge of energy. And you can read more about those energy level centers in my book, Muse Meditation Mastery, if you want. So that's my short talk for the Muse and the Neo Rhythm. I'd say for most of you, just go with the Muse first, get used to it. And then if you wanna augment those meditative experiences with the Neo Rhythm, go ahead and do so. Um, but if 
if you have tried meditation before and it's just been a complete struggle for you and you worry about being able to even sit down and use the Muse for 10 to 20 minutes, maybe go with the Neo Rhythm first. I really think that you'll find that it will stabilize your attention on the breath um, and keep you from either getting very distracted or falling asleep. Um, so I think the, the Neo Rhythm could be the way to go first for people that are having significant problems with meditation in the first place before getting the Muse headband. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little talk. There's links below for both of these devices. Check out their websites. There's different prices right now as the holiday season is upon us. But uh, that's all I had for today. This is Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. Hopefully that was helpful. Talk to you next time.